let's see. Here we go, part three. I'm sorry, no, part four. Forgot which part we're on. Part four. Uh, I did forget to mention his counter and his neutralizer. So, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, defensive training, I'm going to set it up so that he does some shit so that I can uh, parry it. Let's see, what do I want him to do? Okay. Okay, so Wang's regular parry, which is generic to uh, most characters. Can I parry this move? Nope, that's an elbow. Okay, let's start with his neutralizer. His neutralizer, basically, the way it works is you hit back one and it gives you that stinky fart animation. Like, he's shooing away your attack. Now, uh, basically, every time you um, parry an attack, you have the opportunity to do your follow-up attack. And you have one of four options. Um, let's see if I can simplify this. So let's talk about... Okay, into a single jack trying to think of the easiest way to explain this so if you parry one hit you have the option to follow up with that standing uh, three which is the follow-up for the neutralizer uh, and it is a launcher that three is a launcher now the problem with this launcher is it's not necessarily guaranteed no matter what you parry as you can see there uh, I parried a single jab which made it not guaranteed the opponent could have recovered and blocked that if that does happen, uh, you are at minus 13, but there is some pretty good pushback, so it's going to be very hard for the opponent to punish it. They have to use the right thing. Uh, Lars has to use 424, Bob has to use 42, whatever. Uh, so it's pretty decent for that. But uh, because in some scenarios you don't get a f any free damage for uh, parrying, like a quick, quick move like a jab, you have this other option, which is um, faster. And even in this case, like the jabs case, it still isn't guaranteed, but it's safe. So if you're afraid that you're parrying something which will not guarantee a uh, which will not yield a guaranteed follow-up three, you should use the follow-up as one. Um, there are two other follow-ups which I rarely use. One of them is neutralizer into one, which is that low sweep. The low sweep is safe, but it's really slow and it's extremely rarely guaranteed. In fact, oftentimes. If you parry a multiple hit move, um, the second hit will hit you out of the uh, will hit you out of the low. So generally speaking, I always always mix up uh, back one into three if I think it's a big move, or back one into two if I think it's a move that uh, potentially they uh, they can recover before it hits. Um, and I'll talk more about his back one. Uh, a little later, but before we move on to that, uh, one important thing about his back one, which I was showing earlier, is that if you decide not to um, not to uh, do one of the follow-ups, you get the opportunity to parry endless attacks. This will go on forever. Uh, doesn't matter how, if they do a 10 string, if they do whatever, all you have to do, people think that you hold back, but you don't even need to hold back. All you need to do is let go of the controller. And as long as the following attack occurs before Wang is done with the animation of the first parry, he'll automatically parry every follow-up attack. Now, when I say attack, that includes every single mid, high, uh, and almost every special mid in the game. That includes elbows, knees, toes, heads, shoulders, tag crashes, almost anything. There are a few rare situations where he can't parry like he can't parry a, a down jab that's not parryable by this for some reason but you can even parry jimpachi's fireball like it, let's say you you i'm all the way over here jimpachi did a combo on me he thinks i'm gonna raw tag in you bring in wang you can parry through a fireball take no damage so that's really good uh it's pretty absurd the things that you can parry you can parry through um yeah, Elisa's rockets as well, uh, lasers, all kinds of shit. I noticed uh, Hades drops uh, said that in the chat right now. He's right. You can parry all kinds of stuff. So um, really good for that. And as I mentioned, the parry animation will continue through strings, which is also really, really useful. Um, let me see. Am I forgetting anything else? 
Um, so I guess I'll talk about this right now. Let's say you're parrying a move that recovers exceptionally poorly, like really poorly. Um, I don't know what example to give. Let's try. I don't know what example is good with this guy. Let's try that move. Nah, that didn't work. But you can use your imagination. If the move uh, recovers extremely poorly, you can actually let the parry uh, animation whiff. Just let it end, and you can punish with a hop kick, a regular hop kick. Now, this works against Tag Crash, which I'll show you later. But the reason that's uh, uh, favorable over the, the built-in Neutralizer 3, the reason it's favorable is the Neutralizer 3 only does like 15 or, uh, or so damage. But as I mentioned earlier, a regular hop kick does 27. So you're going to be getting a parry into more damage. And it's still guaranteed. So, um, yeah, really, really useful. Basically, one of the things that makes this character like really dangerous and viable um, in, in any environment. Because it basically evens the playing field. Uh, a lot of characters use moves that are plus on block. But if you can visually see them and parry them... They're no longer plus on block. They're unsafe, you know, so uh, strings, a lot of strings you can parry out of, which is really cool. Uh, it, I mean, it's an extremely useful tool. Crack, uh, crack. Tag Crash, really, really uh, useful for parrying Tag Crash. Uh, and unique, one of the most unique parries in the entire game. So very, very useful. And I'm glad I didn't forget talking about it. Um, the next move that I want to talk about is Wang's generic counter because it is pretty uh, unique. It's semi-generic. So this is Wang's normal parry. It parries mid and high, punches and kicks. Just like most characters, Dragonoff has it too. Except the thing that makes Wang's uh, punch reversal or punch counter unique is that if he does parry a, a standing left punch, which is what you will see right now, um, it gives you this wrist break animation. And what that, what's significant about this is you cannot chicken it. So if Wang parries a left punch, it's unchickenable, which is really uh, unique and useful. Even though most characters have to have something that parries only punches, like Fang or Armor King, for it to be unchickenable. But in this case, it's a generic reversal, but if it grabs a 1, it is unchickenable, which is cool. Um, and it also has decent wake-ups. On top of that, um, every different limb that you parry has unique... Um, animations so that one he does this different animation which also has very good wake ups back turn wake ups so that's really good and if he parries a kick I believe he has a completely different one as well so let's just look at that he has that animation let's see what a 3 looks like I don't even remember what a standing 3 parry looks like Oh yeah, so he has four different hit stun animations, all giving him decent wake ups. So, he, and and again, his left punch is unchickenable. So that's really useful for uh, for a generic counter. It's pretty solid. Uh, there, I mean, you got to remember that you have the neutralizer. So overall, neutralizer is going to be better because oftentimes you're going to get a full combo off of this, while you're only going to get a throw animation into wake ups off of this. But it's still something to remember uh, and pretty useful. Let me get some water. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is combos and um, wall game. So basically, anytime you get a stun, um, you can count on back three being a useful uh, float move because you can land the standing jab off of it. So back three is one of your primary juggle starters. Um, as far as off of a hop kick, the hardest juggle he has is this juggle. And it's actually very difficult to do for me, um, off of a hop kick especially, but even off of down forward 2-1, I find it pretty tough to do two four four twos in a combo. So I, I uh, avoid it. I usually will do one four four two, a jab, and then follow up with uh, either that or I'll just do four four two jab into one plus two and continue my combo from there. Um, you can wall carry at the end with forward one four, and I mean keep in mind these are combos I'm doing with Dragon Off, but they should give you a general gist of uh, 
you know, how this character's combos work. Uh, on top of that, oftentimes you'll land with something kind of weird, so you can um, improvise your combos as well. Let me think of what's uh, uh, awkward situations. Oh, um, off of down 4 1, he launches, but he doesn't launch high enough to hit a 4 4 2. So, off of that situation, either you have to uh, tag buffer it and bring in your other guy to jab, or you have to jab yourself, um, which is what I usually do. I'll do a jab into 4 4 2, and then I'll down. That's usually what I do. Um, as far as solo combos, what I like to do is this combo, down 4, 3 plus 4, into down 2, which spikes. Um, the reason that's good is because down forward, uh, 3 plus 4 pushes them slightly closer to the wall, plus you still get the spike. After the spike, um, I like to mix up sidestep 4 with sidestep hop kick or sidestep down 1 plus 2, or... Uh, sidestep but the key is you have to sidestep and watch what they do because if you if they like uh, raw tag your sidestep four will whiff so it's dangerous so you have to be careful what they do after that spike but another good thing about that combo ender is you can do down forward one one down forward three plus four and then forward one four for the additional wall carry so it's the same combo but you can end it slightly differently um, depending on where the wall is and depending on what you want to do <clears throat> So that's what I choose to do. There are other options. I mean, you know, there's a ton of options, obviously. Every character has a ton of options. You can, like, do shit like that for a wall carry. Um, you know, etc., etc. But that's generally what I, I choose to do. That's usually my uh, combo of choice. Uh, another thing you can do is, if you need to raw tag, like if your character is almost dead, you can do down back 4, uh, 2. So, just regular combo down back 4-2 that's really good uh, for bringing in characters safely um, but otherwise that's basically his solo solo combos uh, let's see one more thing I guess I should talk about is you can convert off of uh, magic 4 um, I don't use magic 4 very often because it's kind of a tricky combo to do and I don't think magic 4 is very good as I mentioned earlier in the tutorial but it, it you can convert it so that's really important um, but basically you get the gist of his standing open ground combos and we can move on to his wall game Which is by far what I think is the most useful um, Location for Wang. It's where he's the strongest um, It's so important for this character So basically your wall game is going to revolve uh, mostly around horse tamer now, I talked about this move a shitload during the tutorial, but now that we're at the wall game, this is basically your primary wall pressure tool. You want to just abuse the fuck out of Horse Tamer nonstop. Sidestep 1 plus 2 all day. Here's the reason. Uh, on block, it's plus 9. What that means is that forward 3 is absolutely uninterruptible on block or hit. So... What that means is they can't even, not only can they not interrupt it, so they have to uh, not attack, they also cannot sidestep it because it's a mid hit, uh, it, because it's a homing move, and they cannot crouch it or crush it because it is a mid. So, this is basically the cheapest shit that Wang has other than the neutralizer. His wall game is super cheap, and it basically revolves around this strategy right here Horse Tamer into Forward 3. So, here comes the basic mix-up. So Horse Tamer, Horse Tamer is interruptible. Uh, they can interrupt that. But they're, the, the theory is you've made them so scared to even push a button after blocking Horse Tamer that because of forward three, that they're gonna stand there and take Horse Tamers all day. So all you have to do is do this over and over again until you feel like the opponent's gonna attack and then do forward three. Now, if you get tired of doing this all day, if you got an opponent that's really like uh, good defense and he's just gonna wait it out at the wall uh, and he's not gonna try and carelessly sidestep because of 4-3 that's when you start using sidestep 3 sidestep 3 uh, as I mentioned earlier unlike sidestep 4 out in the open is more useful at the wall because they're not inclined to sidestep because of the forward 3 keeping them still so sidestep 3 becomes more useful here because they're not gonna sidestep and it has plus uh, 3 frames on hit so you can use that to jab, you can use that to 
uh, you know, continue your offense. Um, so really useful. Just keep in mind that sidestep 3 is, I think, minus 12 or 13 on block. So it can be dangerous. But sidestep 1 plus 2, again, the mids are so, so dangerous at the wall that the sidestep 3 becomes completely negligible by your opponent. They don't give a fuck about that because they don't want to get wall splatted. The wall splat is really what's um, extremely dangerous here. So um, moving on from that, you got your full crouch bow and arrow. So your full crouch game at the wall is also very dangerous. Let's say you've pressured them enough and you, you they're over here and you crouch dash in and you want to mix them up with a full crouch 50-50. So from here, if you want to commit 100%, you can go for a hop kick as usual. Um, that's pretty good, but you have to remember it's minus uh, 15. So if you don't want to commit 100% to a hop kick, you can do full crouch down forward two, and that is your mid from full crouch, that wall splash. So that's really good, and it's safe. So if you do this move at the wall, just like out in the open, it has the same kind of pushback. As you can see, Wang, my Wang, which is uh, the white, uh, white outfit, it gets pushed back regardless of where he's at. So that's really, really useful. Um, and what you could do there is if they block it and try to do something careless to get out of uh, the, uh, you know, the wall corner situation, you can backdash that and whiff punish it with whatever you'd like. In this case, a um, death fist is useful because of the range of it and as well as, you know, the wall splat properties. Damn, my voice is killing me. Give me a sec. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a good um, mid mix-up for your uh, full crouch game at the wall. Now, um, if you do hit with a bow and arrow near the wall, I mentioned this briefly earlier, but if you crouch cancel, crumbling tower is guaranteed. Um, and they can't do anything but tag crash out of it. You have to do a very quick crouch cancel though. Like, man, it's not easy to do. But it's what I always do. And I don't struggle this much when I'm not fucking talking. Let's try it again. Jesus Christ. Why is that so hard? Maybe that's harder than I thought. There we go. Okay, so you get a spike. It is guaranteed. Um, so it's really dangerous. It puts them back in a fucked up situation. Because you can then just start spamming Horse Tamer. Or if you think they're going to duck forward three, beautiful. Or if you think they're going to crouch. Uh, or if you think they're going to stand. Boom, another bow and arrow. And they're pissed off again. So, you know, really, really useful mix-ups at the wall. Really, uh, he's good at doing 50-50s, which is basically uh, what you want. If you can reduce the mix-up situation into a true 50-50, which Wang can do at the wall, um, you're in good shape. Uh, the only thing that breaks the 50-50 of Horse Tamer is that the opponent can uh, counter, you know, uh, counter the forward three. But even if they try to counter, they can't counter another Horse Tamer. So unless you have an opponent like Wang or someone that can um, parry out of a headbutt, you know, again, it's a true 50-50. Uh, really, really useful. Uh, let's see. Um, moving on. So let me show you guys some solo uh, combos and show you guys the 50-50s off of those. So let's see. Let's say you hit with a Death Fist and you don't want to tag out. What I like to do, so as far as I know, max damage is either that, which turns you on the other side, 85 damage, or I think, oops, into Death Fist. Yeah, that's probably max damage or close to it. But if you want setups, which I usually do, um, bind, you got to do the one hit bind and then do back to one into back two again, which hits low. So that's what I usually do for the wake up. And I'll explain why that's really good. This is actually a Kembo strategy. Kembo is a Wang player from Japan. He's a, a legendary Tekken player. And in T6, he used Wang. So uh, this is his strat. And give me a sec to get some more. Jesus, my voice is fucking killing me. Okay. 
So, if you hit with the bound, and then you do back to one, back two, the reason this setup is so good is because it's two 50-50s in one. So let's assume the opponent is not going to tech roll, just for the time being. Let's say they're not going to tech roll. So, if you do this, back to one, back two, and they don't tech roll, the 50-50 is whether or not you're going to do a crumbling tower, which is going to hit grounded or low, or you're going to do a back three, I'm sorry, a forward three, which is going to hit mid if they get up crouching for the crumbling tower. So that's the first 50-50 of this mix-up. Now, let's say they are going to tech roll. Automatically, without you having to change anything, there is another 50-50 here. So what you do is back to one, back to crumbling tower, same thing you were going to do before, and that is going to hit low if they tech roll to either side, which is why it's so good. I'll show you the tech roll to the other side now. Death Fist, one plus two, back to one, back to crumbling tower, and they have to block it no matter which side they tech roll. So that's where the second 50-50 comes in because you're doing a homing move for your mid. So basically, if they decided to tech roll and duck to beat Crumbling Tower, forward three is gonna wall splat them into the wall. So you have a double 50-50 in one, you don't have to change it, and it's gonna be like a perfect situation no matter what. Now, the only issue you have here is if they raw tag. Um, I, I've been looking for a good way to punish raw tag here, um, and I'll, I'll see if I can show you what I've found so far. Let's see, where is it? Tag quick roll. So let's say you do the same situation and they do a tag quick, quick roll. You can, on occasion, hit them with a happy birthday um, with back to one. So that, uh, that happens. You can land the Halloween here. Uh, you can also chase down the outbound guy with a high jump four, like that. Um, but, you know, it's not really that reliable, and this is basically the big reason why I haven't found anything that's 100% consistent with, against every character. See, like, you're hitting with the Halloween, but the guy's on his way out. I'm not exactly sure what the best option is for a raw tag. Obviously, you can do something like, um, another back to one, one plus two, before they even leave the scene. Like that. That'll work. Or you could probably do a uh, 1 plus 2 to bound them again. Let's see if that works. Uh, it doesn't work. So what could you do? Maybe down forward 1-1 one, one could work. There you go. So that works. It hits the inbound and it bounds the outbound. So you get a Halloween situation, which is decent. I'm sure there is something better in this situation. I haven't quite found something great yet. But you guys, uh, if you know anything, let me know. Leave them in the YouTube comments because I'm going to upload this later. And, uh, you know, let me know what you guys find. Man, that's not bad, actually. Down forward one one's pretty good. Because then you can uh, float them if you do it right. But um, anyway, not a bad situation. And if they do do a tag crash, which can happen on occasion, you can either... Obviously, you can do the generic sidestep punish stuff, or, well, I'll, I'll show you what I think the best sidestep punish thing to do is. I think that's the best thing to do. Down back, um, 4-2. But, you don't even need to do that with Wang, because you can just neutralize it and launch them for free. Um, this is a scenario in which you can use a normal hop kick to punish the raw tag. Like, oh, let's see. I'll do it right now. There we go. As you can see, it's a full punish. Um, the opponent was not able to block that. And you got a full hop kick as opposed to the neutralizer hop kick, which is uh, only like 15 damage on hit, while a full hop kick is 27 damage. So that is doable. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can just use the regular uh, follow up three, and you'll get that to work as well. Now, um, as I mentioned, I really like that Kembo setup back to one, back two, and you can do that even if you do a tag assault. I'll show you that. So let's say you do a death fist with dragon off. I like to do down back uh, one. I, okay, so here's what the combo is. One plus two, four, four with dragon off as the, as the filler. And then as the follow up, you do down back one and then death fist. That's max damage. 
And even though you use a weak wall splat like forward three, this combo still does over 50%, which is 91 points, which 90 points is 50%. So that's really good off of a safe mid homing move at the wall. So let's say you don't want to necessarily do max damage because they're not going to die. You want to do more damage. So what you can do is you can do down back one, back two there. And it gives you the exact same scenario as you got earlier, which I explained to you off of back to one, back to same exact Okazemi situation. Four, four, down back one, back two into crumbling mountain or four, four, down back one, back two into forward three. That's your true 50 50, whether they tech roll or not, which is really, really useful. Now, um, that's one setup I use, but there is another setup I use off of Tag Assault near the wall that yields another 50-50. It's slightly riskier, but really rewarding as well. Uh, so let's say you hit with the same combo, 4-4, four, four, instant wall standing 2-2-2 two, two, two is good damage and it leaves you in crouch. Now the reason this is good is because from this position, you can mix up 50-50 between bow and arrow, no matter which side they tech to, that's going to be your low option. Uh, and they cannot high crush it or uh, if you choose to go mid sorry I fucked that up if you choose to go mid you can sorry let's try that again while standing 2-2-2 two, 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 your hop kick from this position will also track both sides uh, and it will beat a crouch which they're gonna be crouching to beat the bow and arrow so basically that is your 50-50 here while standing 2-2-2 two, 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 and if they tech roll, as you can see there, regardless of which side they tech roll, the hop kick is going to be your mid, which they can't do anything but block, or your bow and arrow is going to be your low, which again, they can't high, uh, low crush and they have to block. Uh, so that's really, really useful at the wall. Um, let me think, if, is there anything else? Oh yeah, um, let's go position change. And <clears throat> in the meantime, while I'm finishing up, chat, if you guys remember anything that I've forgotten with this character, please remind me and I will cover it. Otherwise, I think all I have left is to show uh, his strategies from his back facing to the wall. I already mentioned earlier that, um, let's see, get the angle correctly, get this idiot to stop tech rolling. So if the wall is two wangs right, as I mentioned earlier, you can combo with back three, uh, which can be very useful. Uh, keep that in mind. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, four, four, four into back three. So uh, that's useful. But if your back is to the wall, let's show that. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, reverse. On. <clears throat> so from this position, Obviously, Waning Moon is very, very useful. You can combo off it. I like to follow up with this setup here because it really does a ton of damage and is, can be really annoying. Or um, you can Tag Assault. I find that Tag Assaulting the 1 plus 2 is tough because the combos are kind of finicky because it's a back turn combo. And if you're at an angle, if it's slightly off, it can be kind of uh, whack. So. You gotta be careful with what combo you do. Generally speaking, I don't tag assault there. Uh, if I am gonna do a combo, I do a solo combo because they're more reliable. But there may be, depends on your team, basically. Um, let's see. Uh, another thing you can do with Waning Moon, as I mentioned earlier, is let's say you're not completely next to the wall and you do Waning Moon, but it doesn't hit the wall. Sometimes you can do that, but like you saw right there, if they're too close to the wall, the wall itself will push them out of the way. So what you need to do is you need to use Death Fist right there. Dash in, wall splat for a Death Fist, still guaranteed, and it's going to be really useful for that. Now, uh, another tool he has for switching positions at the wall is two back. I mentioned that earlier. It is kind of a gimmick, but because the wall is right there uh, in this scenario, it's a little bit better than out in the open because something like down forward 4-1 is more uh, dangerous. It's more of a viable uh, um, option afterwards. And the reason for that is out in the open, the opponent can hold down back to create a shitload of space. But with the wall there, they don't have that luxury. So basically, they're forced to deal with your uh, mix up afterwards. And of course, as you know, the follow up 1 plus 2 becomes more valuable uh, because it wall splats. So even though it's not guaranteed, it is more valuable in this scenario because it's a built-in can throw out of that. 
Um, so it's a decent option to turn yourself around and, um, you know, position change. Uh, a third option you have for position changing near the wall is down forward 3 plus 4. Now down forward 3 plus 4 is an attack throw and it does grant plus 1 on block. It might be more than plus 1 actually, I may have forgotten that, but it's plus frames on block. So there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is that if they block it crouching, it's more like minus 4 or 5. So you have to be very careful how they block it. But if it does hit, it position changes and you can combo off of it just like that. So really useful tool again um, for being a plus on block and you know uh, position changing on hit as well as comboing on hit. So very useful for that. Um, let me think of anything else I've forgotten because if I don't think of anything and if the chat, hey chat, let me know if I've forgotten anything. If I can't think of anything, basically I think I can wrap up this tutorial. Um, Pretty sure I covered everything. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did and I remember it, I'll add it to the video before I upload it, upload it to YouTube. Hopefully I didn't fuck it up. But uh, generally that covers uh, basically everything I can remember off the cuff with this character. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, it will be up on YouTube soon. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe and comment and all that bullshit you guys do on YouTube. And if you guys are interested in stuff like this and would like to support, uh, my amigos at ADARC have sent a nice care package with four premium arcade sticks that I'm going to be giving away to the people that have subscribed. Uh, so make sure you check out the description for information on that. And I guess I will catch you guys later. Take it easy.